Hey, Lab Code agents, welcome back. This time we've got Sean Rawls, and we're going to be talking about the current market, but more specifically on the lead sources you should be focused on. Sean and I did a webinar. La was it last? Dude, I don't even remember. Was it last week, Sean? I think it was last week, or yeah, it was last week. Awesome. It was last week, and it was, it was last week. And it was in regards to lead sources, what we should be doing, what we should be focused. And one thing that Sean and I were talking about before everybody joined here was that as he and I engage with different people in leadership positions throughout, throughout the world, we're noticing that there's, there's two types of people. And there's the people that are the doom and gloom and hey, you know what, sell, 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 the market's gonna crash, oh my God, right? That's what I'm hearing. And then the other side, which Sean and I are both hearing is look, we don't know what's going to happen, but here are the things that you can do right now. And I think that's where Sean and I want to come in and say, this is the way you're supposed to be, right? Correct. Taking Correct. precautions, but not, not, not spreading the doom and gloom. Let's get factual, right? Even though we're emotional, let's get factual and do the things that we can right now for our business so we stay ahead. So Sean, um, can you do a quick intro as to who you are to those for, for those of those people who don't know who you are? Sure. I'm Sean Rawls. I was um, one of the early um, people with Keller Williams International. I started the first Keller Williams franchise in Atlanta in 1999. And um, we grew that to the number one real estate franchise in Atlanta over a period of about 10 years. Uh, it remains there today, although I'm no longer the operating partner um, of those market centers. Um, so I've just, I've been around a long time. We led through the last shift. Uh, I'm a real estate person at heart. And um, when all of this started coming up, I thought, I think I've probably got a few stripes on me that could help some people through this. And so I've just kind of been a little bit more open about some of my opinions and some of my thought processes in hopes that it will help some of the people that are out there. Well, it definitely is. And let's just get right into it. Uh, when, when we started talking just a few minutes ago, before this all started, you mentioned that the last shift, uh, even though it's, it's different, right? In this case, very, I think it's very, um, you did something for your offices that you were leading that I thought was beautiful. And you said that it was, I mean, you know what, I'm going to let you explain it this way. I don't mess it up, Sean. Tell us what you did and how you led. Well, we just, we felt like that, um, there was a lot of uncertainty at that time, right? Not unlike at the present time. So the, the phrase we, we kind of latched onto was um, leading with faith. And it wasn't a religious phrase. It was more, what did we really believe were the things that we needed to stay in, focused on to get us through an uncertain period of time in our business? And basically, it, it brought everything back to basics as a focus. Um, we really wanted to focus on blocking and tackling the unsexy part of real estate for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, it, we had to get back into and get people's mindset changed about lead generation, um, relationship building, coming from contribution, and what would be a difference maker for people. So one of the biggest things that, 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 that we wanted to, we, we struck out on early was we wanted to be the company that would tell you the truth. Um, even if we didn't know what the answer was. Um, and in fact, there was a, um, one of the top companies in Atlanta took out a full page ad that said they were the number one real estate company in, in an area for sales. Mm -hmm. And it was false. And it was right as the shift was really in, getting in full swing. So I took out a full page ad the next week and said, that's not true. And I'm, I'm saying it's not true. And here's, here's why I'm saying it's not true, because we're not number one either. We were number three at the time. And I said, but I'll tell you who is number one based on what you said it was, and it's these people. So, and we just kind of struck out early and said, we're going to be the company that's going to tell you the truth. And we're going to separate fact from fiction in this market. So when you want real data and real information, um, talk to one of our agents, because that's what we're going to make sure that they give you. And we kind of hinged everything on bringing logic to an emotionally fearful market uh, for both agents and their clients. And I think we did a pretty good job of bringing logic to our agents and showing them the difference between the two and what the dialogues were for fear and what the dialogues were for combating fear with logic. And we spent a lot of time on that. And I think our agents did an amazing job 
of going out there and doing that for their clients as well. I love it. So I'm going to touch on that because the things that you said are all, are all facts, fact-based, right? These are the things we need to do now. This is how the market is right now. This is how we're going to lead. We're going to lead with truth, right? Right. And so we're getting a lot of people coming in and saying, well, look, the market sucks. There's nobody buying, even real estate agents, right? And you're finding that these agents that are coming in with this information are the ones that are actually not doing business that have stepped out and aren't really connected to the world that you and I are living on a daily basis. So let's go into lead sources. You've broken it down into three, right? I think there are three. I, th okay. I think there's well, three things that people should be focused on. Um, the first group of lead sources is around people, right? Finding people. The second group of lead, lead sources is, in my opinion, is data. And the third is properties. People, data, and properties. All right, three, perfect. So going into people, what is it that you're suggesting for us as agents to do with people? Just go into our database, reach out to them, past clients or sphere, what does that look like? I think there's a lot to it. First of all, I think it all starts with coming from contribution. You have got to be a resource in the back of your brain, the primary context of your communication with your database is how can I be of help to the people that I want to serve? And that may or may not have anything to do with buying or selling a house. It may have everything to do with connecting them with somebody that can really help them with the problem that they're having. Um, I've always said, if you want to, if you, it, it, the world is, what do they say, six degrees of separation? Mm -hmm. um, but in real estate, it's probably like two or three because we sell properties to everyone, right? Uh, celebrity to the most common worker in your neighborhood. Very so um, I think people need to come from contribution. But um, as I said, you know, what started our whole dialogue on this was uh, the post I had on Facebook a, a week or so ago that just said, let's not forget that there's still a good portion of the world that's working and that's employed and that has the capacity to take advantage of a change in the market. And, and by the way, the market's not going from good to bad. There's no such thing as a good market or bad market. We cleared that up in the last uh, recession that we had. Um, there's a buyer's market, there's a seller's market, and there's a transitional market. And my guess is where we sit today, we're probably sitting a little bit in a transitional market in most markets that's mm -hmm. moving into an area that's trying to decide what it's going to be when it grows up. But um, it'll probably end up a buyer's market before, you know, the next couple of months are over with in most major cities around the country. Um, and the, the, the scripts and dialogues for winning in a buyer's market are different than the scripts and dialogues of winning in a seller's market. Um, but I think people have to focus on there's people out there working. I mean, whether military or police or construction or newscasters or medical people or trucking industry. Um, you made a list. Just a, yeah. You, you itemized it and I took it into a sheet. And so, this, great. by the way, this is Sean's list, not mine. Uh, so I'm that's not, great. Here, I hope I've, you're adding to it because it was, I, a, it was, there's a lot yeah. more to it, I think, than even what I listed off the top of my head. I, I did add to it, but it, was, it all stemmed from you, man. So thank you for <laughs> that. that. That opened up a lot of eyes. So I'm going to read it to people really quick so that they understand that there right. are opportunities. And then we'll talk about some of these. Uh, number one, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, paramedics, truck drivers, police officers, firefighters, Amazon, FedEx, UPS, food providers, grocers, mask manufacturers, government workers, utilities, technology, some construction workers, teachers, music industry, actors, investors. Look, the list can go on and on. That's the list that, that we have and we've added to it. But from that list, Sean, over the last five days, we, we're helping out a UPS worker, right? Right. Two doctors. Great. And one teacher. And from, from our other list, these are people also who need to sell, right? They need to sell. They have no other option. So they're coming to us and they're saying, well, what do we do? How's the market, right? Are people still buying and are people still selling? And, and I think depending on the market, it's going to shift either slower or faster into whatever we become. Correct. And, and right now in Los Angeles, where I'm at, it's a multiple offer situation on most listings. 
And will that last a long time? You know, with everybody being unemployed and the market being slow to really transition into what we're going to see, I don't know. I think I agree with Sean going into a possible buyer's market eventually, right? Uh, but, it would stand a reason. Yeah, that's exactly what I think too. But the point that Sean was making with this list is that there's opportunities in every market and you just have to open up your eyes to it and shift to that. And there are some things that, that he recommends as well that we were talking about earlier, which was, look, of course, you're going to have to look at your expenses and cut them down. Of course, right? Take a look, do this on a daily basis until you get it all done and tighten your belt because yeah, the market is going to shift. But more importantly, don't focus on, on so much of that negativity that, that can come out of that. I think we need to focus on where do we shift to? How do we talk to these prospects? Like you were saying, when we talk to people, how is it that we approach uh, our database, past clients, Sean? I know you mentioned last time, you said, look, you've got a lot, I've put a lot more heart into this now, right? It's not about wow. picking up the phone and saying, hey, Sean, it's Tristan uh, just making the rounds. Uh, have you thought about maybe selling or buying anytime soon, right? That's just not going to work. Well, typically the anatomy of a cold call is business, business, business. Oh, by the way, how are the wife and kids? Right. Yeah. Um, and I think that flips now. I think it's, are you okay? Do you need anything? What's your biggest challenge right now? And is there anything that I can do to help you or your family or anybody that you care about? And I think that's where it starts. I, I think that's the conversation starter to figure, to figure out, A, let them know that you care. And it's not about sales and it's not being about number one. This is, look, sometimes, sometimes it's, it's great to be able to say that I'm the number one agent in, in, in the entire world. Sometimes that just doesn't matter. And, and, and you really just need, right now is your opportunity to, to set yourself up as the person who cares the most that they know in the real estate industry. And, 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 and that'll end up creating, have an economic benefit down the road. But right now, prove yourself as the person who cares the most and who knows the most. Um, you know, we're watching, you know, one of the reasons I said that one of the three lead sources is, is your data is because everybody's glued to the television every day and almost everybody can say, if you, you can't have a conversation right now without somebody saying, hey, the number of deaths went up in the U.S. by X number of whatever, or the number, it's true, right? I mean, everybody's watching that, that how many cases there are, how many people were hospitalized, how many people actually died. And it's almost like numbers that people are reciting before the end of the day. They're watching those numbers and watching those numbers. I think if I'm a real estate agent, I've, you've got to provide those numbers for our industry because people are going, oh my gosh, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. And you need to be the person in your market that says, let me show you, now that you know the coronavirus numbers, let me show you the MLS numbers. Yes. We had, last week, we had X number of listings hit the market as new listings. We had X number of properties go under contract. We had X number of closings last week. And now this week, I'm going to show you another one. I'm going to do it just like the coronavirus. That's up by 20 from last week in this category. That's down by 100 in this category from last week. And then the next week, you keep doing the same thing and tracking it so that the people in your database are going, what they're, what they're starting to understand is there's no such thing as a good or bad real estate market, right? Mm -hmm. There's a real estate market, and we always have sales. We proved that the last time. It was just, there was a lot of smoke and mirrors around the, the, the unbelievable amount of inventory that wasn't selling because we didn't have enough buyers for all that kind of inventory. But yet we looked at our closings in the rearview mirror and the number of closings that were happening month in and month out were not drastically changed through the shift. It just was painful because we had so many unhappy people who couldn't sell their properties. Yeah, that's very true. And I think you saying that we need to keep our, our ear to to the ground when it comes to the data that's coming out on a daily basis what sold what's active what went pending i think that data will become more real as we get into this because if you look back the 30 days it's super mixed right sure even the last seven days it's still mixed uh once we get deeper into this and you look and you have that actual real data you'll see how the market is truly shifting either up or down but more importantly 
when I call my past clients, like Sean is saying, or my database, and I'm saying, hey, hey, Sean, I'm just calling everybody that I know from my cell phone, just reaching out to see how you're doing. Is everything okay? We're doing fine. And then they'll be like, uh, Tristan, yeah, every, everything's fine. I uh, hope everything's going well. You know, Tristan, by the way, what's happening in, in real estate? Are things still selling and buying? Which is the question that we're getting, Sean. Of course. And then that's, 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 that's the question. Uh, yeah. And that's when you come in and you answer it with what Sean was saying. Well, it's he, facts. It, yes. Let me, let me share the, well, it's a, that's a good question. That's a question I'm getting a lot these days, but let me share with you the actual numbers. Cause right now I'm not really sure how everything is, but I can tell you this. We had, we typically get this many new listings. We're now getting X percent of those. We typically have this many things under contract. We're now getting X percent of that. These went up, these went down, these went up, these went down. This is the actual numbers for my MLS. So I'm watching and I'm gonna be a, I'm not gonna be a sensationalist, I'm not gonna be a Pollyanna, I'm not gonna be overly optimistic, but I'm watching the numbers like a hawk and I'm gonna report the numbers week in and week out so that everybody understands what they are. Somebody's asking, uh, do we compare year over year? I say for now you, comp you compare week over week. I agree, week over week right now. Yeah. We cover. Now, you might want to look back just for your own educational point and say, all right, what's typical right now? What's typical? And how far off typical are we? And, let's, and, and you can start, start a new baseline based on this new norm that we have. But data is going to be your best friend right now because it'll help you have conversations and it'll, it, you'll be the smarter one in the conversation having. Um, there's no, it doesn't do any good to have a bunch of opinions and people are going to have a lot of opinions that are frankly fear-based yeah. and you've got to be able to speak to a logical, factual, uh, position of that, of that conversation. That's a great point, man. I had a conversation with a friend of mine, uh, when I went to the grocery store, he just happened to be in line with me behind me. And he said, Oh, Tristan, how are you doing? I'm like, Oh, we're doing great, man. Just staying home and working from home. He said, like, you guys must be totally devastated. I go, what do you mean? He's like, well, the real estate market, it's tanking. I'm like, I go, look, I don't know what will happen in the future, but I can tell you right now, every single listing we've got has multiple offers. So uh, there's not enough inventory for the amount of buyers out there right now, right? So uh, I don't know where you got your information from, man, but he's like, what? That doesn't make sense. It's a good question. So oh, that's interesting. Well, I haven't, it, it, somebody said the real estate market's tanking. I'm, I would probably say, wow, that's fascinating. I haven't heard that. Where are you getting that information? <laughs> <laughs> you just go back to them and be like, what? Wow. What? How do you know more about my business than I do? Unbelievable. Where, what's your source? Uh, here's my real estate card. Here's, yeah, my here's my real estate card. Call me back when you get some more crazy news. Um, <laughs> But it's true. I mean, I think everybody just has this law and everybody wants, look, everybody likes to watch the wreck in the, in the NASCAR. Everybody likes to, it, there is something sensational about mass, uh, about grand failure, right? Yeah. Um, and I think we have to be careful because most people are automatically hitting the assumptive buttons that this thing is wiping everything and everything, everybody out. And I, I think we have to be a, 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 a clear voice that says, we don't know. And the truth of the matter is, we're still doing business. We're, we're doing open houses virtually. We're showing homes virtually. We're taking separate cars to look at houses. We, we, we are closing houses remotely for the first time. We are notarizing things remotely for the first time. They are we are deemed essential because we are an essential part of any economy, both locally and globally. You know, I've always said real estate is we are the economic tow truck of America. We are that we, they use interest rates to, for, I mean, it is the number one health determiner of how good our country is doing. We are usually the last in the ditch and we are usually the first out of the ditch because we are such an important part of the, of, of the economic recovery when things go bad and the gauge of how prosperous America is based on home ownership. So it's, we're gonna continue to be on the front line of this, but because of that, I think we have to set these people straight that are standing around the grocery store thinking the sky is falling. I think that's the key. We have to be that voice of reason, right? That's what it comes down to. So Sean, you also started a, a, a trend 
that I don't know if you started, obviously, was that whole top lead sources. I took it to, I took it to another level. I'm like, dude. You, brand, you branded it. It was nice. That was cool. Was, I, I appreciate yeah, it. But I'm always giving you the credit. So, yeah. <laughs> you, um, you get to stop after a week or so. You can own yeah. the whole thing. <laughs> um, so I had, I, I had an idea. I was like, well, besides the past clients and the sphere uh, that everybody's talking about, who else can we target? And that's when I saw your post, right? That's when I'm like, you know what? It's a great opportunity right now to take that list that you created that you said doctors and all these people, attorneys and so forth, and start also categorizing your, your contact management system, whatever it is, if it's Chime, right. follow-up boss or command, doesn't matter. Start taking the time right now to categorize these people as to uh, A, B, C, D, right? Past clients, how often do they refer? Buyers, when are they looking to buy? Sellers, and more importantly, also categorize their employment, right? Right. This way you can then go through and say, well, I've got three doctor friends. I should reach out to them, see how they're doing, see if I can help them in any way because I know they're not going home because they're scared of giving the coronavirus to their kids or to their family. So they're usually looking to rent something outside. That's what's happening right. to my two doctor friends. So yep. uh, we're able to reach out to the right people that we start categorizing. But here are some things that I added to, to the list from, from what you, you gave us here. Great. One was, you and I talked about this before, was online buyer seminars. And yes. I interviewed a, a, young, a young lady last week, right before we talked on a webinar. And her name is Kimberly Meserve out of the East Coast. And she had just shifted from doing an in-person seminar to an online virtual seminar for first-time home buyers. And she promoted it on Facebook. She had a link to Eventbrite. And as people registered, put in her name, cell phone number, email address. As soon as she'd get it, she'd call them and say, hey, thanks for registering. Uh, do you want me to set you up on a home search and kind of get the information through? And then a week, two weeks later, she did the virtual, the virtual webinar. She had 20 or so people in. And like I told you before, she qualified four people of people who need to buy right now who are going to work with her. Great. And so that's another way that people have shifted as well. And online, I know we talked about this as well. Facebook, Google, you know, go all out. It's the perfect time when people are going all in on, on, on the internet, on social. I mean, how, how much is social up right now? It's insane. It's insane. But here's, here's, what, yeah, here's what I love about that story. And here's what I love about what's happening. Everybody's making shifts in their business. And this girl is a great example. Uh, Kimberly, did you say? Kimberly, um, yeah. It's a great example. So six weeks ago or 12 weeks ago, she probably would have never done an online buyer seminar. Right? True. Sure. Um, People would have not said, yeah, I can come list your house tonight. Um, why, don't you, why don't we grab a, a chat line at um, 6.30 after you get home from work and we'll just uh, we'll do a listing appointment virtually uh, and I'll, just, I'll do it right after I have my dinner with my kids and I'll sign up your house for, for listing. I'll get in the MLS and I'll catch you later. I mean, most people are, that would have never happened six, eight, that's 10 weeks ago. True. So that's becoming the norm, right? And anytime we have shifts in business or um, our cultural shifts or whatever it is, the good ones tend to stick. Mm -hmm. And so what's going to happen, I believe, that when we come out of this thing mm -hmm. is some of these new technological leverage sources that we've employed to get through this time, we're going to go, you know, that was pretty awesome not having to race back to my office to meet somebody for a buyer consultation. That was pretty awesome not to have to race 20 minutes at rush hour traffic in LA to, to go list somebody's house. Um, and I took X number of listings and X number of buyer consults um, virtually during this time. And why, why, would I, why in the world would I want to change it? Look how much more, when, when the market pendulum swings back, just look at how much more efficient that's going to make the average realtor and how much more efficient it's going to make the expert realtor. Because all of a sudden people are going to start going, well, shoot, man, 
yeah, I've got a slot at seven o'clock. I can, and then I can, uh, I can list your house at seven thirty, all from the comfort of my living room if I want to. <laughs> and I, and then I'll meet you on Saturday when you're not working and, and on your own personal time, and I'll come out there and we'll kind of wrap things up and we'll get it all going this week and it's done and we're going to do it all virtually and there's no, you don't have to rush. I don't have to rush. Let's just do this comfortably and let's just go. It's going to make, people are going to be like, oh my God, if there's one thing that came out of this thing that I'm going to be thankful for, it's going to be these new leverage sources because people are going to be able to do a lot more transactions with a lot less stress and effort on the front end based on some of these technological um, adaptations sticking in my opinion. You know, that's a really good point because if I think back to the previous shift, uh, different different shift, um, DocuSign was barely picking up, like electronic signatures. Remember that? Yep. And yep. then after, it was like, it was the norm. It was the norm. Which was beautiful because I hated having to sign things, not electronically, by the way. Of course. So I of think- course. I think talking about that, just going a little bit off tangent, which still is very, uh, uh, very uh, incohesive with what we're talking about here. And that's the way that we have these online meetings with people or seminars or what some people are doing as virtual parties, right? There are tools that, that are out there for you to use. Number one is Zoom, like we're using right now. Sure. And that's probably the, the, the best one out there for being able to use it more reliable for one-on-ones. Like if Sean and I, if I was the, the buyer and Sean was a real estate agent, we could totally meet like this and talk and, and Sean could share documents here and, and show them. Uh, if you want to also test out different ones, there's blue jeans. Uh, blue jeans is one that Facebook uses all the time. Every time we have a meeting with Facebook, they send us a blue jeans. Uh, <laughs> so blue jeans is very popular. Google Hangouts. Sean, you've seen Google Hangouts. I have, but I've not used it, actually. Not in that manner. It's not as reliable as, as, uh, as Zoom. For some reason, it's, sometimes it's a little grainy. It's, the right. audio is a little off. So I prefer Zoom. And if you're going to go and do like um, a webinar into Facebook Live or YouTube, definitely do either Zoom or there's another one if you're taking notes called Be Live dot tv you you can try that one you can do facebook lives with it and then the last one is skype i mean everybody's sure very familiar with it very it's high quality good quality audio good video uh those are the those are your options they were just asking for some best practices for virtual listings and and buyer presentation i'm going to go back to what sean said originally and he pretty much said when you're reaching out to people and talking to them You've got to put a lot of heart into it. And it's the same way when you're doing any type of a presentation. It's got to come from, from a place of, of authenticity and genuineness. Uh, it's, it's not business as usual right now. It's, uh, it's, it's like he business said. Business is before. unusual. Yeah, it's business right? is unusual. Sean, I'm just going to steal everything you're saying from now on. And just, I, think, I think business is unusual was a Gary Keller quote from the last okay. one. I think I stole. I think I stole that one. Oh, I love it. But Gary's taught a lot of people a lot of things. Yeah. Um, let's talk about properties for a second. Let's do it. Um, because in my mind, this is you know when we had the call last week, one of the I think one of the questions that we got was how do I find investors? And my response was um, have properties that investors would be interested in. That's the fastest way to find an investor. Um, and one of the things that's going to happen in this is, again, you can quarantine yourself while you're in your car driving around and kind of taking notes on the market or looking at different things or getting exposures to different things that are going on. But um, find properties that you think people should be interested in if they could do something about it. Because don't let your circumstances or what you think people's circumstances are dictate the level of effort you put into exposing the market to great opportunities. So be somebody who is, even if they're not your listings, you can, you can go out there and find properties that you think, God, that is a fantastic opportunity for somebody. Um, and talk to the listing agent about it and say, would, would you mind if I share it with my database and help you promote it? And then send it out there and say, 
here's a here's a here's a duplex in this part of town. It's this much rent. It's got a great hit, history. If if somebody has the capacity to make an investment right now, this is a no brainer. And all of a sudden, just piquing people's interest with properties like that, you're going to start getting inquiries that say, where is that property again? How much is it? And they'll ask you a question and that person goes in your database, whether they buy it or not, or want to see it or not, you've, you've got a fish on the line that says, Hey, I, I could be a buyer for the right property, but there's, there's no way to find, there's, there's no better way to add new people to your database and your sphere like great listings or great properties. And if you've got great listings, promote the heck, heck out of them. And if you don't have great listings, go find some great listings that you can promote the heck out of because you will find leads from properties. It's the ultimate attractor for leads in the real estate business. That's very true. And, and this is the opportunity to be able to use social media for that as well. So not only just for your database, but go out there and use Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. If you're going to be the person that's bringing these amazing deals to people as they come out, make sure that as many people as possible see it, right? Through the, last, through the last shift, Sean, I used, uh, I think a lot of us used Craigslist, right? Sure. And uh, I had a lot of friends that were using it and were posting up Craigslist. They were posting up foreclosures and short sales from uh, real estate friends or REOs that had a whole bunch of foreclosures. And we would get a lot of buyers from that as well. So just know that you're able to do that with permission and do it. You have so many more avenues right now than before. Well, it's, I, I think we, we forget that, you know, we have a database that's local, right? And, um, and some people have moved out of it and we stay in contact, but we really think locally as a realtor um, when we should be thinking globally now. And some people are great at that. It comes natural, but some people aren't. And for those people that aren't, it, it, this is a great conversation to kind of step into because it's a global market and people buy property in other states just to diversify their portfolio. There's a lot of people out there that are excited about what this is going to do for real estate prices. Just like there are a lot of people right now that are excited about where the stock market is because they're buying like crazy. Um, they they know what the average trading price is for some of the greatest companies in the planet. And when they're down 20 or 30%, they're buying, 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 and they, they, they're, they're happy as fat cats. And believe you me, there are people that are just as happy about the potential of a, of a buyer's market hitting again for the real estate industry because they want to buy in a buyer's market. That's very true, man. Companies like um, Apple, Tesla, Delta, uh, people are jumping in on some of these. Amazon, areas. Microsoft. Um, I mean, come on. It's just, it goes on and on. So I think, I think that's a great point that you bring up too. It's all based on data, right? So the more information that you can gather, the more facts that you can lead with, the better you're going to be. And the good thing is if you're starting now, instead of being the ones, one of those people that's panicking right now and spreading that fear, if you're gathering information, facts, and, and data to be able to, to give that back to the consumer in different ways, you're going to be a professional to their eyes a lot quicker than somebody else. Well, listen, you, you've got to realize that everybody you know that's not in the real estate business is probably thinking what the guy at the grocery store was thinking behind you. <laughs> yes. Right? I mean, that was, here's my guess. My guess is the person that said that to you was probably an affluent, educated human being that had no idea what he was talking about yeah. at the moment, um, yeah. but was caught up in the headlines and the news and the sensationalism of coronavirus and what that's doing. And you, it's our job to set people straight because it's not only about the real estate business. If you, if a lot of people just kind of go about autopilot until somebody smart makes them think, I don't know that I'm thinking properly. And it's not just about real estate. What other, what other ways, am, what other places am I assuming that this is just pulling the rug out from under that it may, maybe that's not the case. And all of a sudden, people just need to realize that when, when there's all this uncertainty out there, it's not, it, stop worrying about having answers and just make sure you're asking enough questions because they'll ultimately get you the answers that you're looking for. 
but you don't have to have the answers, particularly when you don't have the answers. Don't pretend to have them. Yeah. Like embrace the uncertainty. Yeah. We don't know what's going to happen. That's, that's a fact, but we do know what we have control over. Right. And those are the actions that Sean is recommending. Hey, look, go out and target these people, talk to them, uh, use your heart to talk to these people and start working on that business, more of the relationship part of it. And that's, that's really where this is all stemming from. So and bring me... data and bring properties, talk to people, talk to people factually, have data to back up what you're saying and find properties to throw out there on a regular basis on social media, on phone calls, on emails with texts and try to and try to add people to your database that you don't know by letting great properties bring them to you. Great point. And if you can, if somebody's working, if, if you're hitting all three of these things, you're going to be fine. You're yeah. going to be fine. That's it. I agree. A question here. Trish round says, Hey guys, this is great. What do you say to the sellers and the buyers about the unemployment rate today? Uh, she says 3.2 million unemployed. Is there any verbiage or any approach? Sean? No, I, I, think, I think the obvious is we're going to hit staggering numbers of unemployment. Um, and I think the markets, I had a conversation with a financial advisor yesterday and he said, you know, I, I, think, we're, I think it's pricing it in, but we don't know. And these numbers are going to be, um, for people that know what they mean, they're going to be big numbers. They're, they're going to cause quite a hiccup in the U.S. economy. And it's going to take, you know, whatever that number is. Um, now, keep in mind, the people that were in the first round that probably lost those jobs, my guess is they were not necessarily home buyers, right? So everybody that lost their job was not a home buyer. Um, they're going to, as that goes on over the next couple of weeks, you're going to start getting into the people that have homes that are going to need your help selling them. And you're going to have people that are going to be taken out of the home buying process, but it's, it's, it's still going to leave plenty of opportunity for people to buy and sell property that aren't one of those statistics. And as awful as those numbers are, and as big as those numbers are going to be, they're not going to define the real estate industry. They are going to impact it. They're going to have, they're, we're taking some of the, some of, a couple of horses off the team, right? Um, and we're not going to have as many pull in the wagon, but that doesn't mean the wagon's not going to be pulled. Yeah. Uh, look, I'm, I'm, I agree with almost everything Sean is saying all the time. So Sean, you hit it right there. Uh, the more I know you, the more I agree with you, buddy. Uh, so just to add to what he's saying in regards to that, I would also bring in that uh, the new builders for construction, they aren't building any more homes, right? And so if they were building a whole bunch, then I'd be like, well, you know what? It looks like there's a whole overflow of new homes coming too. So on top of that, like Sean and I talked in the last webinar about this, and that was that this, this anomaly wasn't led by the fact that our country was an economic, having economic problems. It wasn't. It's, it's just an anomaly that was just freaky. We've, none of us have ever been through this before. So yeah. we don't know what's going to happen, but we do know the facts. And that's, this wasn't led by the real estate market. So if anything, I'd be looking to the real estate market even closer to see what's going to happen. Yeah, obviously we think that less homes are gonna sell, but if you're looking at that list that Sean provided, right, of those people that are still employed, that's a lot of people that still can afford and will be looking to buy homes. So you- Well, and what, one of the things they're gonna, one of the things that they're gonna like about it is they're not gonna have as much competition in buying them. So if, if, if somebody wants to buy or is thinking about buying it, they're, they're gonna, have a little bit more luxury in doing so, they're not gonna to have to do things within an hour. They're not gonna to have to do things before the sun comes up tomorrow. They're not gonna to have to see this when they weren't expecting it. I mean, it just, it, some of the pressure is gonna come off and it's going to, it'll probably put a little downward pressure on pricing because you won't have the multiple offers as a norm in the market. 
but one of the things we learned in the last shift was we can talk about average houses and we can talk about above average houses. But we learned in the last market that it doesn't matter how good or bad you think the market is. If a, if a house hits the market that's fantastic, that looks great, smells great, priced great, its days on market is less than 30 days. Does it have to in smell the, great? It has to smell great too. Yeah, no cat urine smell, uh, none of that, right? Um, but it has to look good, smell good, and it has to be priced good. And if it meets those criteria, it's gone before the next mortgage payment is due. Now, and that's, that was in the height, or, the, or, or I should say the, the lowest part of, of the, the recession we were in the last time. So that's a truth. That's a fact. You can be average. An average could be 60 days on market, 90 days on market, 120 days on market, wherever you are. But I'm going to tell you this, when all, this, when all the dust settles on this, I guarantee you that the properties that hit the market, that look good, smell good, and are priced compellingly well, they're going to have less than 30 days on, on, on market as an average days on market for the greatest properties that get listed in, at any given time. It's a price war and a beauty contest all at the same time. So if you're taking listings, they have to be staged, they have to be beautiful, they have to look good, they have to smell good, and they have to be priced extremely competitively. And if you meet that, you're not going to have a problem selling inventory. That's it, man. That's the key. Because homes still sold in 2009, which was the greatest recession we've had. Well, us, right? And so you just have to look at the facts, look at everything, go over those three things that Sean is saying, hey, look, these are the most important things you need to focus on. And I'm gonna go back to what you said at the very beginning, which was uh, you, you were leading, it was called faith, leading by faith. Or, leading by faith. Yeah, leading by faith. But that's not saying, hey, look, it's, it's religious in any way. It's more leading by faith and having your facts to back you up going back to those basics of what's actually working and knowing that if you stick to that, it'll work. That's, that's what he's talking about. Right. So Sean, anything you want to add here now that we're wrapping up, we're getting close to the hour. You know, I would say, I think we were talking about the, um, were we talking about the, the, the beach analogy before we, we logged everyone yes, in? That was good. Yes. Do that. So, one of the other things that we, 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 we talked about in the last shift was, and it had to do with the, the leading with faith thing, is if you know, that it, or if you believe that you're doing the things that are going to be good for your business, just keep doing them, right? Just keep doing them, just keep doing them, and you're going to be surprised at where it gets you. And the analogy we, we talked about on that years ago was, if you've ever been to the beach and you put your towel down and you put your drinks down and you set up your umbrella and then you get up and you go in the water and you play in the water for 15, 20, 30 minutes and you decide you want to get out and go back and sit in your chair and you get out of the water and you're looking around for your towel and you think, oh my God, somebody stole my towel. But the fact of the matter is nobody stole anything. You just got pushed about a half a mile down shore while you were having a good time. You just didn't even know you were moving. It didn't even feel like you were moving. Mm -hmm. And I think when this shifts like the one that we're in or entering right now, this is just like the undercurrent of the ocean. If you just keep your head down, focus on lead generation, focus on relationship building, focus on expanding your sphere, focus on getting properties in front of people, Focus on getting the data out there that, that destroys any level of fear or emotion that you come against. You're going to be surprised when, when, when it's time to come out of this thing, how much further you came than you even thought was possible. You're going to have more market share. You're going to have better relationships. You're going to have more credibility. And you're going to be a lot better at what you do just because you're doing what you're doing religiously now in one of the toughest markets and toughest places that we've seen in a while. Yeah, you're beautifully said. I appreciate that. And then just, just to get some numbers out there for people that are wondering what happened in 2009, 2008. Here you see 2008 in the United States sold 4.12 million homes. You fast forward to 2019, 5.34, right? The estimate was 5.52, obviously, if, if, we didn't have this that happened. But right. from here to 2019, 
that's just a little over a million in difference. What does that mean? That means that homes are still selling, right? Right. right. Which is, I think, what we need to focus on. Because a lot of the times we don't, we don't comprehend what it means when the market shifts. And if we see that homes are still selling in the millions, it puts things in perspective. Well, a lot of people look at the real estate industry and they talk about the numbers being up or down or good or bad. But really, if you really peel back the layers of that onion, it's really an inventory issue that we're really talking about at all times. And back in 2007 to 2011, that was, we were flooded with inventory. So it just felt like places were rotting all over the place because, and nothing was selling because everywhere you went, there were two, three, four, five, ten 10 different for sale signs in a neighborhood. And you thought, oh my God, the real estate market's terrible. But the fact of the matter is, we had triple or quadruple the amount of homes for sale with no increase in number of buyers that wanted to buy them. But the, the, the actual number of sales were not drastically changed in the market that we lived through. And so focus on actual sales, because as if this thing moves into buyer's uh, market territory, we're going to see more and more listings at the market. And more listings creates more clouds and smoke, but they don't really tell the story. So make sure that when people are having a conversation about the market, that they're not really just talking about inventory being high or low. Because again, you've got to, when people use the word good or bad, that's your first clue that it's an emotional conversation. <laughs> you need to go back to there's no good or bad, there's more or less, there's buyer or seller, right? But use terms that are actually substantiated with the economy. Good or bad does not exist. It's all relative. Thank you. I didn't think of that. I didn't think of telling it that way. I appreciate that a lot. So sure. instead of you as an agent saying, hey, we're heading into a bad market or we're heading into a good market, that actually doesn't explain anything. So I, I love that. Uh, be more facts based. Sean, sure. I love having you on, dude. Let's, hey, let's, buddy. Let's just make this a routine, man. Uh, I'm in. As I'll come back as often as you need me, buddy. It's, it's great to talk to you. I appreciate the invite. And um, you you're, you're, very, you're very kind. You have a book coming out. When, I have a book coming out. It's called when? Effortless. We don't know. We, we, we've, we've been, uh, we had a discussion to table the publishing of it. So based on everything going on. So we're pushing it back. Okay. Um, and I'm waiting to find out when that is, but I'm pretty excited about it. And, right. um, well, whenever that you is, you know, you'll be on. So super. Well, thank we'll have you, you on uh, a few more times before that too. So <laughs> just let me know what I can do to help buddy. Thank and I you. wish everybody a lot of luck out there, but uh, I will tell you the harder, the harder you work, the luckier you get, but make sure you're working smart as well as hard. Thank you, Sean. And for those of you who want to rewatch this immediately, it's on our Facebook business page. It's Lab Code Agents. You could just go there and replay it. But we are editing it and we'll upload it into our YouTube page in about five to 10 days. We're a little behind. But Sean, thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tristan. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you too, man.